much. Our, our film department is getting so good. <laughs> no, thanks to the internet. Um, <laughs> So not to invoke fear, that was quite dramatic, um, but we are, we are launching this, this series called Fighting for Freedom, um, which is all about looking at our lives and, and, and seeing the stuff which can rob us of what God wants for us. Um, and for, for all of us, um, often we might think that we're fine when, when God is still wanting to do so much in our life. Until the day that we die, there is stuff that we're dealing with inside of us. And this is going to be about a month and a half um, to two months of journeying with God from a place of, of seeing stuff in our life that we don't often see and wouldn't normally see and come into a place of, of greater wholeness and, and fullness in Him, to come into victory and wholeness in Christ. And often there are issues in our lives that are caused by, by patterns, by, by certain kinds of behavior that we've followed for, for a long time. And once we start to see those and see how we function and see how personalities lend themselves towards that, to, to, to almost identify sin in our life and how that hits us, we can, we can start to walk free. And for, for us as humans, we live in a fallen world um, where sin has been present since the beginning, since Genesis, Sin has been here. 6,000 years ago, sin came in the form of a serpent. And, and since that day when Adam and Eve bit from that fruit, there's been the presence of sin, which, which means that we're not perfect. We aren't perfect beings. We, we, live, um, yeah, we just live in a world that is, that is fallen. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says that, But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. And our, our sin actually separates us from God. Thank goodness for Christ, who, who actually bridges that gap. But even though we have Christ and we have um, all the grace and freedom in Christ, we, we still need to deal with these things in our lives, the stuff inside of us. And for for so many of us, we can, we can think that we're doing great. Um, a couple of years ago, Trevor and I went down to, to a course in Cape Town, um, pretty much focusing on this stuff, and there was a session on forgiveness. And we spent about an hour or two with somebody who would facilitate that time, um, and they would just walk us through a process of, of realizing and seeing stuff in our lives that we're not seeing and help us to just walk a, a process from unforgiveness to forgiveness. And so we went through this, and I thought, great, you know, I'm, I'm going to play open cards on the table and think of all the people who I haven't forgiven, and they won't get to me at all. So, you know, mentioned the the kind of obvious people in my life through um, yeah, many years and different relationships that I thought, you know, maybe I haven't got so much um, yeah, forgiveness and so on towards um, this person. So I put them all down and we prayed a prayer and so on. And, and I thought my time was up, you know, it was about 15, 20 minutes done. And then, then they said, all right, let's just pray and just sense God for what he's saying. I'm like, cool, I can do that. <laughs> I mean, Trey was there, eh? And they're like, okay, well, yeah, we just sense there are more names. Um, so what we're going to do is just wait on the Lord, and he has a piece of paper and pen, and I just want you to keep on writing. And so anyway, you know, I thought, jeez, okay, um, wow. So the truth is nuts. A couple of names came down, um, and from my original five or so, we got to about 10 or 15, um, which we prayed through, and then again, they said, mm, let's just pray again. Uh, I thought, come on, man, I've, I've, I've been so honest and open here. By the end of that session, there were about 45 names on my page, and I didn't think I had issues. <laughs> okay, am I an angry person? Don't look angry. <laughs> but from, from small incidences that had happened, incidents rather, that had happened even in pre-primary school, like when somebody pushed me off my bike and broke my special like battery-operated hooter, which was like really special, and it's like something so small, you think that that would never play a role, and it did. It hit me all these years later because I still remember it. Things that I have a memory of in the past are often a sign that I haven't dealt with those. And so I realized, wow, 
I need to walk in forgiveness like daily, weekly, consistently in my life if I'm wanting God's freedom. Um, and so I realized this. But you know, God, God comes to, to free us. 2 Corinthians 5.17 in the New Living Translation, it says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person in Him. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. We're being transformed into something different. That's God's plan for us. Galatians 5 verse 1 says, It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Jesus didn't come to keep us in bondage. He came to release us from that. And so often, we can think that we are free and we can sing songs, but yet the enemy is so, um, like, um, you know, often just comes in such a subtle way and throws us into bondage. But all of us are in a process of becoming new people, okay? So this is the walk that we're on. And tonight, as an intro, we're just going to mention three things. If you were here this morning, I apologize, but I'll try and have a bit of a, um, of a different angle than from this morning. Um, three things to remember tonight. Number one, all of us are broken people, okay? All of us are broken and in the process of being healed, and we can so easily say, like I said, well, I'm doing good. I woke up this morning and opened the curtains and brushed my teeth and showered and I'm ready for this day. And I haven't got any issues. Didn't get angry today. Didn't hoot at anyone in traffic. Got to work in one piece. I was polite in traffic. I even let somebody in. I mean, wow, I'm doing well. Um, and often... It's those of us who say, no, we don't have any issues. That should be the most worried <laughs> because we just can't see our issues <laughs> as well as some other people do. Um, and, and that's often me. You know, when we think we're fine, we're not. We might think we are, but, but we need to allow God to come and just release us and give us freedom again. We weren't just set free and, and then we live in that way without evaluating and asking God to, to just give us discernment as to get in that place. And so realize that all of us, everyone in this room, has, has certain issues, certain stuff in your life, which over the next couple of weeks we're going to look at and ask God, not us, ask the Holy Spirit to point his finger on. And let's, let's not deceive ourselves to think that this stuff doesn't affect us especially if it's happened a long time ago. A couple of years back, um, when I moved out, I, I had this, this elevated fear of going to bed at night. Um, and I, I just had this irrational fear of being broken into. And the first place that, um, that I rented didn't have much security. I had to put up my own burglar bars when I moved in. Um, and there was this big sliding door um, just with one of those flip locks, and I was like, come on, man, that's not hard. I'm sure I could break into that. So I put one of those bolts in. But still, I lived in this place of, of irrational fear. I'd often wake up to any sound at night. Uh, one night um, when I was playing Sims, <laughs> I don't play it anymore. Um, but there's this like funny Chinese accent in it, this this like old Chinese lady who laughs. Um, and one night I hadn't locked my iPad. It was about half an hour. And my bed is right by a window. And there was this, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, what the hang is that? I seriously, I was like, what is a Chinese lady doing outside my window? And I was like, ah, oh, Sims. Right. But anyway, you know, pulling, pulling back here, I, I really had to come to the place where, where I was prayed for and I, and I broke this, this fear over my life because that was not the way that God designed me to live. And something that, that could seem so small can actually affect us in quite a big way. Um, a long time ago, I used to have a lot of anger in my life, but it was suppressed anger. It wasn't um, worn on me every day of my life, but at times it used to come out, often when I was alone, because often this stuff comes out in secret. Um, and I'd be fine, 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 and suddenly I'd be like, wow, what just happened? Like, why did I get so upset about that thing? And through a process of, of, of just counseling and restoration, I had to realize that there were triggers, there were things, a lot of unforgiveness, as we know. 45 names that, that helped to, to lead down the road to anger in my life. 
And I had to deal with that. I had to, I had to let go of this temper. And to this day, I'm not so naive to think that that won't come back in my life. And so I've constantly just got to be aware of God's grace and His Holy Spirit. And when I'm not walking close to God, it's in those moments that my flesh starts to rise up. And, uh, and, and God just so often just graciously reminds us that, that, hey, you actually need me. You need my presence and my peace. Because all of us have messed up, as Romans 3.23 says. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. All of us. That's everyone. It's not always great news, but Jesus is great news. And sometimes we can look at other people's lives and think, well, how come they've got it all together? Um, whenever they come to church, they're always so happy and, you know, looking more fashionable and confident and good. Um, and, you know, honestly, no one has it all together. No one. Some people are just better at hiding it than others. None of us. We all walked in here tonight with certain insecurities, certain worries, certain struggles that we're going through. We all battle. We're all on the same page. And that is so reassuring because no one's better than anybody else. We're all in the same place. We're all human beings. Okay? None of us are like immortal, supernatural, um, not that I know of, no incredible hulks about to come into form. Uh, Adrian, nice. <laughs> so, Number two, we have to fight for our freedom. We have to fight for our freedom. And what I thought about doing was, get, um, was um, getting boxing gloves and calling Trev up and having an archer. But I, I'd probably be knocked off um, because Trev throws a mean punch. He throws a mean punch without boxing gloves. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'd like to, to draw us all the way back to the Old Testament and to the Israelites, and, and the story a couple of thousand years ago. Um, remember, they were slaves in Egypt, and God raised up Moses, okay? Quite a rough guy at first. At once, he, he killed um, somebody with a donkey's jawbone, just smacked him out of, out of anger. There, um, there was this Egyptian busy, busy persecuting one of his Israelites, and he just lost it and got upset. And, you know, God refined him and so on, but, but God, God used him to lead the Israelites towards freedom. Um, and so this long journey began, um, part of which was, was 40 years spent in the desert, in the wilderness, which should have taken them maybe a week or two to cross, maybe three or four max. It took them 40 years because of their disobedience and their moaning and, and their, their inability to just surrender their lives to God. I mean, 40 years. You walk in the desert, you're three. You come out at 43. Like, where did the last 40 years of my life go? And how sunburned must you be after that? <laughs> it's crazy. Somebody actually um, worked out all the different um, stats as to how much food and like water you would need and and like all the stuff if you if you had to feed all these Israelites for 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 forty years and it's it's an astronomical figure that we come to but anyway so they're approaching the promised land Canaan and they're coming to what God has promised them um, but there's a problem. Because there are people in this land who don't want them to take over. And, and so what Moses does is he, he sends out spies, people who go and survey and check out what happens. Um, I'd like to read from Numbers 13. Let's go from Numbers 13, verse 31. And it says this, But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. The spies had been, they come back and they're saying, They are stronger than us. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. Cannibals! <laughs> And, the, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of, gi of um, great stature, tall, like giants. There we saw giants. Now, I'm not sure how short the Israelites were, um, but I'm guessing these were all like Goliath figures. Okay, like, like really big guys, all right? Um, it says, there, the descendants of Anak came from the giants. And this is how they saw themselves. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. Grasshoppers, I mean mere insects. And so we were in their sight. So there was this fear, this irrational fear. God, you've, you've promised me this, but right now 
I'm not seeing that. I'm just seeing all the bad stuff. And, and often this is what happens when we're dealing through our stuff and we know God has promised us freedom, but we're saying, God, I'm not in that place. I desire your healing, but I'm not in that place because I, I, I can only see all these doubts, all the things that the world throws at me. And then God raises up Joshua and, and he, he just spends a couple of verses in Joshua 1, just commanding Joshua as to what he was called to do. And I'd like to read from here too. Joshua 1, let's just read verse 3 first, which is quite instrumental. It says, God says to him, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. That's his promise to us. As we go, as we go in his name with his authority, he will, he will give us favor in that place. And he has, he has his his instruction to Joshua from verse 6. He says, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land. I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Second time he said that, strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions that Moses gave you. Don't deviate from them. Don't turn to the right or the left. Because if you follow them, you will be successful in... Everything you do, what a promise. Study this book of instruction continually. Just a little throwback to last week, Psalm 46, remember? And then we, we read a couple of scriptures and said, right, which one is speaking to you? Which one is standing out? How's that gone this week? If you were here last week and you got to practice that, um, just getting in the word, this just reminds me of that, just meditating on his word. All right, meditate on it day and night so that you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. And only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Third time, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I mean, what a promise, what a command, what a charge that God gives Joshua. And so, you know, Joshua is this new blood. He's excited. He's a warrior. God's raised him up. And he was the one who would, who would lead the Israelites into the promised land. And so he sends out spies. He sends out spies, and they go and check, kind of like Moses did a couple of months or years before. And in Joshua 2, verse 23, they come back. And notice the difference in reaction from the first time. Joshua 2.23, then the two spies came down from the hill country, crossed the Jordan River, and reported to Joshua all that had happened to them. The Lord has given us the whole land, they said, for all the people in the land are terrified of us. I mean, what happened to the giants? Grasshoppers. I mean, suddenly, like, these giants are scared of them. There's this talk in the camp. God has, God has completely turned the tables around. And you see, when we, when we learn to walk in the promises that God has for our lives and in His authority, and we, we learn to, to speak those promises, those words over our lives, when we deal through the stuff in our own insecurities, God turns our tables around. He turns our, our, our misfortune into absolute favor. That's what He's good at doing. That's what He does. And so when we choose to walk in Christ's authority, our enemies shake. Our enemies quiver. Satan gets upset and scared. And all of us need to fight for our freedom. We can choose to live how we are. And sometimes we're actually happy to live in bondage because it's comfortable. At times it's actually comfortable. I don't want to deal with my issues. I'm actually happy moaning and feeling sorry for myself. It's a nice place. Sometimes we like that, eh? Sometimes we're actually comfortable in our sin. It gets warm. It gets cozy. Because it's going to be hard work dealing through these issues that I have, but we have a choice to make. Are we going to stand where we are, or are we going to fight for our freedom? Thirdly and finally, we need to own our stuff. And Trev often says this. He was joking about it this morning. And, and, and this is such a big thing for our church. And something that Trev has often mentioned, we need to own our stuff, the stuff that we battle with, that nobody else does. We need to own that because we can be so quick to blame other people for our stuff. There's this quote that says, wherever you go, there you are. It's mind-blowing. <laughs> wherever you go, there you are. But it is mind-blowing. It's like, hmm, yeah. I mean, I came to church, so I'm obviously here. I am in the flesh, right? I'm here? Yeah, but, but whatever decision we make, we find ourselves in the consequence of that decision, right? 
That's kind of what it's pointing towards, whether that be a good or a bad consequence. Because we're all responsible for our own reactions and responses. And what we allow into our lives will affect us in certain ways. For instance, if I choose to eat a chocolate cake from start to finish, I'm probably going to feel sick afterwards. I can't, I can't choose a different consequence. And this is a banting cake. Then maybe it's different. I don't know. But it wouldn't taste as good, right? I wouldn't do that. I can't choose a different consequence. If I'm going to eat lettuce the whole week, okay, I'm probably going to be starving, but I'm going to feel a bit different inside, right? Because choices that we have have consequences. <laughs> I remember um, back in the, the firehouse days, and Kieran knows all about this, you know, Sunday morning comes and often you've left a mess because you were so tired and, and you tried your best and half leaders had to leave early and you forgot about something in the kitchen. Because mm, that often happens. Um, and sure as nuts, somebody would come to me, bless Auntie Grace. <laughs> the Tristan, I want to know what happened here. And you know, I can never blame anybody else because it was me. But now I can blame Kewen. <laughs> like, sorry, Grace, speaks to Kewen. <laughs> I don't know what happened, you know. Um, speak to Jared, right? You know. I remember driving to to um, Cape Town a couple of years ago, um, and I was about two thirds of the way there, and I got this phone call, and I started chatting, and I put it on loudspeaker, and I eventually just got tired of holding it. So after about ten minutes, I just decided to just for the last ten minutes, call was coming towards an end. I, th I just thought I'd kind of speak here, I can hear a bit better, it's a bit more comfy, you know, like Western Cape. Hey, ten seconds after I did that. Like, seriously, seriously, for the last 15 minutes, I've been so law-abiding, and now in 10 seconds, you come. And so I'm trying to make all the excuses in the world to say, you know, for the last 15 minutes, I, I wasn't doing this. And he's just looking at me saying, are you finished? Are you finished? And I had to pay a fine. And I was mad at myself the whole way, thinking, why did I do that? Because if we don't actually accept who we are and take the responsibility. We will blame others for the things that we battle with because all of us need to own our own issues and our reactions, and we need to choose to respond well to others. At the end of the day, this is what I often remind myself and people, at, at the end of the day, I'm not responsible for your actions. I'm responsible for my actions and how I live my life. And that's, that's quite reassuring to know that I'm not responsible for what you go and choose to do next, but what I choose to go and do next. Um, because being responsible for myself is quite a challenge, you know. So like being responsible for more than one person, wow, live your life. And something that I will, I will ask people at times, well, actually ask myself if there's been a disagreement with somebody, I'll say, is this my issue? Is this your issue? Because if it's your issue, I can't blame it on you. You need to see it. Is it our issue or is it a complete non-issue? Like, is it just stupid, you know? Is it my issue? Is it your issue? Is it our issue or is it just not an issue at all? Because sometimes we can make issues out of non-issues. And mostly it's my issue. Okay, mostly it's our issue. But it takes humility to deal with that and say, oh, sorry. Just to apologize, to be, to be open to apologize. And to deal with our stuff. All of our issues in life are caused either by our sin or by our sinful response to somebody else's sin. Okay? The first one's easy, yeah. I mean, issues in my life are caused by my sin. When I don't walk how God wants me to walk, there's stuff that goes down. But I didn't always realize that I can respond sinfully to somebody else's sinful way. Judge them, get angry at them, talk about them because of what they did. Stuff comes up in my life. So, we need to realize that we're all broken people. We all need to fight for our own freedom. 
and ask God's help with that. And we all need to own our stuff. And over the next couple of weeks, that's what we're going to do. We're going to own our stuff together. So that's our intro. That's how we're starting it off. Um, and I really encourage you to, to commit to the series. And as importantly, commit to a community group in the week. If you aren't in one, come and chat to Trevor myself. We'd love to get you in one. Um, because this is going to be worked out and processed in our community groups. And, and, and so weeknight meetings are as important as Sunday in terms of just working this stuff through. Um, so what I'd love is just for us to end with a song. Uh, so Kieran, why didn't you come up? Let's just end with just worshiping God together. We had some coffee just now. Um, and let's do that. Shall we stand together tonight? Let's just stand. Lord, thank you that you are, you are so amazingly pure and, and awesome and beautiful and spotless. But Lord, when I, when I often look at my own life, I just need to realize that, hey, I'm human. I, I, I will never actually be God because you are God. And Lord, thank you that you don't condemn us and push us down, but you're pulling us towards you. You're pulling us up towards you and wanting us to, be, to just realize who we are in you, to just know our authority in you, God. And Lord, tonight, I, I, just, I just pray, even for the first week, that your grace would just be so present in our lives, that we just be aware of, of, your, of your love for each one of us. And as we worship now, God, we just ask that, that Lord, you would just reassure us of that. So.